Vast areas of the deep Pacific are targeted for seafloor mining, yet these are some of the most poorly explored habitats on the planet. The life of the abyssal seafloor, depths of 5,000 meters or about 3 miles, is weird and wonderful. They're animals with novel adaptations, sailing sea cucumbers, predaceous sponges, yet most of these species have never been collected and are new to science. One of our main project goals is to explore the biodiversity of this region to understand how these, they will be impacted by mining activities and in particular to assess how areas set aside from mining, protected from mining, are adequate to preserve the biodiversity of this vast region. Why do people care about mining in the deep sea floor? Well, it's covered in some areas with black potato-sized structures that are full of valuable minerals, nickel, copper, cobalt, rare earth elements that we need to make cell phones. And the supplies of the minerals in these nodules are enormous, a world supply for many decades of many of these essential metals. One important element of this project is to evaluate the extent to which communities on seamounts or at shallower depths uh, in, within each um, no mining zone can serve as uh, sources of larvae to recolonize communities on the abyssal plain. And so that's one of the important um, routes for reestablishment of these communities after, after mining. And so one aspect we've been doing is, is sampling larvae and also looking at connectivity and species overlap um, between communities in these distinct habitats. At depths of 4,000 to 5,000 meters, or about two to three miles, the deep ocean is extremely difficult to sample. It's a very remote habitat. We're using a variety of state-of-the-art techniques, such as benthic landers and remotely operated vehicles. A real technological workhorse of our project is the remotely operated vehicle Luukai. This goes, descends to the bottom of the ocean with video cameras and manipulators and collects the animals that we need to study, as well as the sediment samples that contain the diverse microbes. Among the most numerous and diverse inhabitants of the deep sea are microorganisms, yet they're chronically difficult to study. The approach that we are taking for this project is to study their genetic blueprint in order to better understand some of the ways that they obtain energy and recycled material in the deep sea. The remotely operated vehicle is a marvelous tool because it allows you to target individual organisms, slurp them up into a chamber un undamaged, or pick up sea cucumbers very gently with its manipulator and drop it into a box. We are able to collect all kinds of animals that have never been collected before in this part of the ocean. Although we're sampling microbes and taking lots of animal samples to look at what is there, what species are there, we're also trying to ask questions about what are the animals and the microbes actually doing in the sediments. And for this we're using seafloor landers, uh, benthic chamber landers, and also what are called micro-profiling landers. And these allow us to measure respiration rates, see how much the animals and the microbes are breathing at the seafloor, and also allow us to track uh, how much food they process at the seafloor that we can then compare to other areas and build up an idea of how the um, ecosystem is functioning. Baited cameras are a very useful tool to sample the mobile top predators in, in these ecosystems. So here we have one of the most common animals in the deep sea, a rat tail fish that have long tapering tails that some early scientists thought looked like a rat's tail. 
at the seamounts, we found swarms of eels, uh, a species that we're not sure of just yet. These are animals that are akin to lions and cheetahs on the plains of Africa. But because these, these animals, such as rat tails and eels, because they're so mobile, oftentimes they avoid the ROV. So the, the baited camera system gives us a tool to attract them right in front of, of our instruments to senses them. So often with the uh, natural resource management, we end up chasing our tail. The activity starts and then we come up with a plan for how to manage it and how to conserve the resource. This has happened with fisheries, it's happened with mining on land, and it's very unusual here because these reserves have been set up before the deep sea mining has begun. So we hope through our research 